Hey, welcome to the Tech You Should Know podcast, and thanks for supporting us at Commander.com by reading our articles and getting our newsletters, and by listening to these Tech You Should Know podcasts. Just in case you missed this show a while back, we're grabbing one of our finest podcasts of the year. We'll be back soon with all new podcasts for you. Meanwhile, Merry Christmas and a sincere thank you for all you do to support us at Commander.com. Enjoy the show from our Tech You Should Know archives. Quest Diagnostics says patient sensitive personal and medical information is at risk after criminals hack a contract company used for bill collection. The FBI is now investigating after one of the world's largest hotel chains reported a massive data breach. Every single day we hear about a new data breach. A Seattle woman is in police custody in connection to a massive data breach which impacted more than 100 million Capital One customers. This was the biggest hack of one company users ever. All right, now to the latest on the massive 2017 Equifax cyber attack that compromised the personal information of nearly 150 million people. It seems to happen at least once a week. Yeah, another data bridge. It's totally starting to turn into white noise. Cybercrime is one of the fastest growing criminal enterprises, and stolen data is one of the biggest ways that hackers make money. And anyone can be a victim of a data breach. Governments, cities, utilities, credit card companies, hospitals, hotels, high-ranking CEOs, and then people just like you and me. So far, 163 million people have been hurt by data breaches this year alone. Let me put that number into perspective. Now, the Staples Center in Los Angeles holds 20,000 folks. To hold 163 million people, we would need 8,150 Staples Centers all lined up in a row. Wow. With such high numbers, chances are that your data has already been compromised. And before you sit back and say, who cares? I have nothing to lose. I'm broke. I don't have any money. As a matter of fact, I wish those hackers would give me some money. Don't give up. It's probably a safe guess that your information is already in the wrong hands, but you may not know just how dire the consequences can be. That's why I want to tell you about one of the best tools that you have at your disposal. It's the world's largest database of stolen login information. This isn't a hacker site. This is a great site. It's called Have I Been Pwned? That's right. Have I Been Pwned.com. I will explain a little bit what pwn really means, but let's just say for now that your battle against people who want to steal your information and ruin your life starts there. And today we're talking to the man who put the website together to help us all. Troy Hunt created this website back in 2013. It's a great resource I always point my listeners and readers to. So every time there's a data breach, the stolen information gets leaked online. So this website collects that information and stores it right into a database. So once it's inside the database, all you have to do is type in your email address, and then you'll be able to see if your information has been leaked online. The site also tells you which data breaches you were a part of and what was stolen. But there's a lot more to this site, too, and there's a lot more that you can do to fight back against the hackers. That's right. You can protect yourself, even if your data has already been stolen in a breach. So in this podcast, we're going to give you the concrete steps that you need to take to protect your information from falling into the wrong hands. And this is really good stuff to know, because if you're not careful, people can do terrible things with your personal data. They could even commit crimes in your name. So go ahead, see how long that takes to make go away. So this is Tech You Should Know, where we talk to industry movers and shakers to keep you up to date on everything digital. You can listen to new episodes every Tuesday and Friday. And do me a favor, be sure that you actually subscribe to our podcast wherever you get your podcasts so that this way you never miss one. Heck, these podcasts are even delivered in your sleep. So in this podcast, we're going to be speaking with Troy Hunt a cybersecurity expert. And by the end of this episode, you're going to know everything about data breaches, why they happen, who's at risk, and how you can keep your secrets safe. You don't want to miss a moment. Hello. Congratulations. You just won the lottery. To claim your prize, you just need to pay a small entry fee, enter your credit card information, security code, and expiration date. I can't stand robocalls. I am so tired of them. Aren't you? Well, did you know that about 50% of all calls come from scammers? Yep, there are about 200 million robocalls a day. 
And I know what you're thinking. They're all a bunch of ring leaders. <laughs> all right, maybe not. The worst part is that their methods are getting even more sophisticated. Have you heard of deep fake technology? The program that can plant your face on other people's bodies? Yeah, it's there. Well, now there's technology that can actually replicate other people's voices. And you can bet scammers are going to use this trick so that this way you give away your data. It's astounding. The lengths that people go just so they can steal your money. Well, maybe your data, in other words, to pwn you. And that's why I'm glad you're here, Troy. You've spent the last seven years on the front lines fighting against the data thieves. And I'm excited to tell our listeners all about your site, Have I Been Pwned? But before we dive into exactly what you do, I want you to clear something up. Some of our listeners may not know what the word pwned means. So care to explain? Yeah, good question. So, look, it's a, it's a word that comes from gaming culture where you know, someone would shoot someone else and they say, hey, you've been pwned, I shot you, you you're gone, <laughs> sort of thing. And it's a, it's a misspelling of owned because the O and the P key sit right next to each other on the keyboard. So it's really a term that comes from the gaming culture, and that makes sense. A lot of hackers seem to view data breaches as a fun challenge. It doesn't matter that data breaches are a serious threat to people's lives. But to young hackers, and maybe even older hackers, breaking into a stranger's data is just a game. Looks like you're about to get pwned. Yeah! Now, the term pwned isn't as popular as it used to be. You know, there's always new slang to push out the old, but it sounds like it was a pretty popular term when you first started the site. And it's just one of these things that sort of entered popular culture and, and vernacular, and, uh, and now it's, it's part of this website's name. And the website has just reached a pretty significant milestone. Wouldn't you say you just hit, wow, 10 billion records? Yeah, yeah. And I mean, it wasn't just hitting it. It was smashing through. It went from, you know, 9 billion something to about 10.1 billion. So it's, it's just fascinating how it's grown. But on the other hand, it's also a good thing that it's grown so large because now you're helping more people than ever before. So knowing that you put the site together, it's your baby. How do you feel about reaching this milestone? Well, there's a bit of it which is kind of sad as well, right? Because you're going, oh, you know, fantastic, we hit this milestone. And then you can kind of go, well, we only hit this milestone because a whole bunch of people have had their personal information compromised. So I, I sort of lament the fact that, that I'm, I'm here. And I, I guess the best possible outcome for everyone is that there would be no more breaches and it wouldn't get any bigger. And the, it's almost like the, the failure of Have I Been Pwned would be the most successful thing <laughs> to happen to the industry. But unfortunately, that's not going to happen. You're right. It's great that you're helping people, but it's also sad that you have to work so hard in the first place. So thank you for everything that you're doing. And I got to say, it seems like an enormous workload, Troy. Tell me, what was the most interesting part of your job? I guess the really interesting thing is, is that you just never know what's going to happen next. I mean, this morning I've had a couple of emails from different parties about breaches of hundreds of millions of records each, and you just never know what you're going to wake up to each day. So it's the unpredictability that keeps you going. Well, I have to give it to you. You certainly picked a career that's um, hard to predict. I mean, who knows where hackers are going to strike next? And I'm always hearing about the different types of security breaches. We have law firms, hospitals, smart light bulbs, smart cars. It seems like nothing and no one is really safe anymore. It's anywhere that your information is digitized. And in fact, I hesitated as I said that because data breaches can also be non-digitized information. And that's an important distinction. Any type of information is truly at risk. It's not just the stuff that you put online. So, Troy, why don't you give us a few examples? We've had a lot of people in Australia expressing concern that at the moment, if we go to a restaurant, we've got to leave contact information for COVID tracing. Now, you may not have heard of contact tracing. That's because it's more common overseas than here in the United States. But basically, it comes into play when a restaurant discovers that it's been exposed to COVID-19. So to protect our public health, it has to track down and identify the people who came into contact with the infected person. Now, in order to do all this, a restaurant has to take information from everyone who walks through its doors. So, Troy, tell me more about the particular information that you have to share. You go to the restaurant, you're told about the policy of contact tracing, and then what? Uh, and you usually write that on a piece of paper. Now, that could be disclosed at some time, and that would, by legal definition, constitute a data breach. So in this situation, a data breach could be a simple case of one customer writing down their contact information and another person walking past and just seeing this. It may, on the onset, seem like a little thing, 
but it still is a breach of the customer's privacy. So a, a breach is any time uh, information is disclosed to unintended third parties, and that, that just happens every single day. It's a bummer to know that you can't even go out for a burger without risking your information. But these constant threats are a good thing to keep in mind. You know, it's always fascinating to me to know that this threat, which most people think of as purely digital, can affect anyone. I mean, picture this. It's going to sound a bit far-fetched, but stick with me. Imagine you don't own a phone, a computer, a tablet, a laptop, a TV. You get the gist. Imagine your home is free of all digital devices. You have nothing. It's like you're living in a time capsule. You send your messages through snail mail. You never use the internet, not for work, not for school. All right, sure, you'd be a complete anomaly in 2020, but let's pretend that you specifically chose this life for a reason. You were afraid. You might choose this life to feel safe. You might think to yourself, well, I'm not at a risk of data breach. I'll never have my private information exposed because I will never go online. We got rid of your cell phone. This is your last credit card. Are you sure you want me to cut up this card and get you into the parking garage? I'll be taking the bus now and I'll be paying in cash. What other traces of me exist in the world? Think, people. Well, I hate to break it to you, but our world is too interconnected for anyone to be truly free from this threat. What do you say about that, Troy? Oh, absolutely. In fact, one of the data breaches that I was in was for the Australian Red Cross Blood Service. So I had donated blood at a blood van, and I never digitized anything myself. I literally went into the blood van, they gave me a clipboard and a pen and a piece of paper to write down my personal information. And that was my experience with handing over data. Now, they obviously then took that information and digitized it, and then it went into a system, and then it got left publicly exposed. So you tried to do a good deed, but it bit you in the back. Unfortunately, that's typical of this highly digitized world that we all have to navigate through. It can seem like hackers are going haywire all over this digital space. It's like they're barreling over anyone who happens to be in their path. But you don't have to be a victim. That's why we're arming you with know-how all about data breaches, one of the biggest threats today. Now, next up, we're going to talk about the different types of organizations that do get targeted. What patterns can you look out for? This is good stuff you don't want to miss. How can you stay up to date with the latest news? And stick around because Troy and I are going to teach you the best ways to be proactive, what to do and how you can do it. You don't want to miss what's coming up. Shopify helped businesses break sales records over the holidays with the world's best converting checkout. Let's hear that one more time. The world's best converting checkout. Shopify's legendary checkout makes it easier for customers to shop on your website, across social media, and everywhere in between. Now that's music to your ears. Any way you spin it, you can be a smash hit with Shopify. Start your dollar a month trial today at shopify.com slash records. Hey, welcome back. You're listening to Tech You Should Know. I'm so glad you're here because today we're exploring Have I Been Pwned, the web's biggest database of stolen login information. And it's a good site. It's not a hacker site. Now, Troy, let's hit the rewind button for just a bit. Take me back to the early days before you made a website to help billions of people around the world. Why did you decide to create it? I mean, was there something that happened? What was the decision? Did you have a data breach, maybe? I was in a personal data breach, or my personal details <laughs> were in a data breach twice, actually. In fact, the, the catalyst for this was the Adobe data breach in 2013. Now, this was a huge attack. Hackers hurt millions of Adobe users. They leaked people's usernames and emails. Even the password hints were exposed. So because criminals could see the password hints, hackers made educated guesses and then broke into other accounts that these people owned. They invaded everything. And let me remind you, Adobe accounts are expensive. Access to the whole package of Adobe apps can cost you, well, anywhere between, say, 50 to $60 a month. And there are over 150 million people in that breach. And at the time, I'd been doing a bunch of work with various data breaches, doing analysis on things like the prevalence of password reuse across different, uh, different services. And reusing passwords across different sites is a common weak spot where bad guys can get you. That's why you've got to have strong and unique passwords to keep hackers out of your accounts. Now, remember, you can have the very best security programs loaded onto your devices. 
but a weak password will collapse your defenses, well, like a house of cards. So, Troy, you were analyzing people's tendency to reuse passwords. What happened next? And I thought, oh, it'd be kind of nice to have a little service, you know, something little, <laughs> where people could find out if they'd been in a breach somewhere. And I thought that was, that was sort of a good little pet project. And over the years, it's just grown into something much larger. Yeah, I'd say it's pretty far from the small service you envision, but it's good that we have this site because the problem is just getting bigger and bigger. And, you know, I think a lot of folks may not understand the severity of this issue. So I'm hoping that together we can offer some perspective. So let's begin and let's say that someone's information has been stolen. What's the worst that can happen? I think the most obvious worst case scenario is that someone literally gets into all your other accounts. So, yeah, let's imagine it's, it's a cat forum, right? So you, you're, you're commenting on a cat forum. You've got the same email address and terrible password you use everywhere. And the person in the situation is probably thinking, ah, it's just a site I'm using to look up adorable kittens. No need to have any extra security, right? That gets breached. Someone now has the email address and the password, and they go through everything from your social media account to your email, to your, uh, uh, email account, such as your Gmail all the way through to your bank accounts and think about all of the things you have in those other places. You've essentially handed over a sort of Pandora's box full of your own secrets. There's no way a hacker would resist the temptation to open it. They're going to expose all your information for the world to see. Now, you might not care about the cat forum, but you might care very much about the nature of some of the email addresses or emails that you have in your account. You might care very much about some of the, the messenger messages that you have in your Facebook account. And you probably care very much about the money in your bank account. Absolutely. And that money's up for grabs once they've got your username and your password. Hackers can wire transfer your money to their own accounts, or they can change your password lock you out of your own bank account, then turn around and sell the access for thousands of bucks on the dark web. So your worst case scenario is that someone now has effectively the skeleton key to your digital life and they just go through and wreak havoc across that. And that could be a combination of uh, financial havoc if they have access to your money uh, through to just the, the, the very, very uncomfortable feeling of someone else reading your personal emails. And there's always the threat of identity theft, which is just horrifying. So identity theft is always an issue too. And and the question then is, is what does a data breach give you that could enable identity theft? So how exactly would you answer that question from everything that you know, Troy? And of course, this depends on the nature of the data breach. But if if you have a look at have I been pwned, there's a who's been pwned list in the navigation. And it describes for each one of those data breaches what personal information was exposed. Right. Can you give us some more examples of how hackers can try to steal your identity? Now, in in the US, you guys have social security numbers, which are enormously problematic because they're kind of quasi-private, but then they appear in a bunch of places and they're used for identity verification. This reminds me of the FOIA breach two years ago. This government website handles requests on the Freedom of Information Act. But thanks to a hack, people's social security numbers were exposed for weeks on end. Just imagine what criminals can do with that. They can open a bank account for money laundering. They can apply for a passport, flee the country. Well, after COVID, of course. And this is me being optimistic. People can do some terrible things in your name and then get you in a ton of legal trouble. But then no matter where you are in the world, other attributes that regularly appear in breaches are also used for identity verification. So things like your date of birth. Now, of course, we splash that all over social media these days anyway. That's right. And this can cause big problems when a financial institution wants to verify your identity. One of the most common questions is, what's your date of birth? Now, if anyone can find out your birthday just by looking at your social media posts, mm, that kind of puts a big dent in your armor. And that's often data breaches. Your physical address, your phone number, they're often in data breaches. So this does give someone who's willing to target you and actually look to take over your identity a lot of the material they need to do that. Absolutely. So, Troy, your site is known for being a helpful tool that notifies people about these data breaches. But you've made a lot of updates over the years, and there are maybe some other things that you're doing on the site that people just don't know about. So tell me some of the changes. Look, I mean, when you land on the front page, it's pretty much the same as what was there in 2013. And there's just been a a bunch of other features that have, have popped in. So, for example, one of the very early features was a notification service. So you can leave your email address and say, let me know if I appear somewhere later on. You know, that's nice. So all you do is enter your email and you're subscribed to future notifications. And then this will tell you all about future data breaches. There's about 3.3 million people that are currently subscribed to that. I think this service makes good sense. 
primarily because of a lot of people that just simply do not hear from the organization that they've been breached in or they hear very late uh, i just had people uh, contacting me in the last couple of days saying hey we got a notification about the wattpad data breach and the, the wattpad data breach went to have been point about a month ago if you've never heard of wattpad that's a digital writing website that's mostly used by young folks age 13 to 18. It's chilling to know that hackers would target kids' information, but it's even worse to know that this website totally dragged its feet instead of telling users about the breach immediately. Yeah, correct. Uh, Look, I'd never really heard of it before, but I'm I'm looking at it on the front page now. It's the eighth largest breach of all time, and it's it's the second largest individual website breach (laughs) that's on the service. So there are 268 million people with accounts there. So when websites fail their users, your notification service picks up the slack. So as an early warning system, I think there's a lot of value in this service, and that, to me, is one of the most useful things. So I think by now we've done a pretty good job of explaining how serious the threat. So next, I want to give you guys and gals some concrete steps to follow. If you're worried that your data may have already been compromised in a data breach, go to www.haveibeenpwned.com, and let me spell that. It's have I been, and pwned is P-W-N-E-D.com. Just type in your email address to see if your record matches anything in the databases. Now, Troy, help us visualize what this process will look like. In a best-case scenario, what happens next? Well, look, I would like to hope whether you see yourself in a dozen data breaches or no data breaches, the next step for most people should be to go and get a password manager. Yeah, we talk a lot about password managers here on Tech You Should Know and also over on commando.com. That and, of course, 2FA, two-factor authentication. I think the thing that's really important for me is that we try and get people out of this pattern of reusing their passwords everywhere. So so we as individuals, we can't stop data breaches. I I have absolutely no control over the fact that, say in my case, the Red Cross Blood Service got breached. Right. But what I do have control over is that when I create a password on these sites, I make them all unique. And then when a website gets breached, someone doesn't have the keys to all my other online accounts. Exactly. A password manager is like a shield that will protect your personal information. And just for fun, if you go to Twitter and you search for Netflix hacked, see how many people on there are saying, my Netflix got hacked, my Netflix got hacked. And ask yourself, is Netflix hacked or are you all just using the same password as you are in other places and someone's logged into your account? 99% of the time, it's the latter. Absolutely. So we've established the importance of unique passwords. I want to take just a second to address a common misconception that people often think that they only need one tool to protect themselves. They think they just need one special package and that's it. Or a person will have a password manager but no security software. So I just want to stress that these type of programs are not immune to hacking. They're at risk. That's why it's good to double up on your security protocols so you have different security programs all working together. You want security software, antivirus software, a firewall turned on. Make sure your router is up to date as well as all your operating system software on whatever device you're using. So let's just take a step back, Troy. Let's look at the big picture. What have been some of the worst cases that you have seen recently? Well, look, Wattpad would be the biggest one this year in terms of a raw number, about 269 at rounds two, million incidents. Um, Look, there's been a bunch, particularly just over the last couple of weeks, from one uh, threat actor, as they would call it, uh, in particular. So the the person who goes by the name of Shining Hunters has just dumped a huge amount of publicly facing data. What about some other companies that have got pwned? And if I look at the the most recent breaches here in Have I Been Pwned, it's things like Swivel. So Swivel is is public transport in Egypt. There's over 4 million accounts there. And looking at your website, another one of the biggest breaches was Appit, right? 5.8 million accounts there. They are an AI training data company. Any others that stick out? Uh, Scentbird for perfume subscriptions, another 5.8 million there. Uh, Chatbooks for uh, a photo print service, another 2.5. And we haven't even touched on credential stuffing. Those are combinations of email addresses and passwords that hackers steal online. Then they'll turn around and steal the access online. Now, in January of 2019, this is crazy, 2.7 billion records were leaked on a popular hacking forum. And it just goes on and on and on and on. And there's all of these incidents, which when I look at them next to the ones that are 100 millions of records, don't look too big because they're like air quotes only, <laughs> two and a half, three, four million records. But there was about 18 of these incidents dumped very, very quickly. There doesn't seem to be a connection between any of the companies that got breached. So I'm wondering, 
Are there any patterns behind the attacks? Are there any, say, commonalities that could have drawn hackers to these websites? Uh, let's say it's running a particular technology stack which hackers might be targeting at the time. Or uh, well, who can we find that might have a certain class of vulnerability? So obviously there's no concrete way to predict which type of websites will actually get hacked. So it's, I kind of joke a little bit when I talk to companies who've been breached sometimes and say, look, it's, it's not personal. You know, you're just on the internet. That's why you're the target. Yeah, there's no rhyme or reason behind these big attacks. Yeah, look, it's really hard to sort of break it down into a vertical and say, uh, you know, in July, it was all about healthcare companies. <laughs> so, no, it's, it's always about everyone who is on the internet. It's, it's just entirely indiscriminate. That's a great point. Hackers target companies because they're big money makers. And we've gone over just how enormous this problem is. And it follows us on our phones, our devices, our toothbrushes. It may sound strange, but Troy's got some interesting stories to share. One of them is all about how he hacked his friend's car from halfway across the globe. What a great friend he is. Yeah, you heard that correctly. Stick around. You don't want to miss this. All right, team, time out. Let's take a moment to huddle. We've learned a lot of good stuff in this podcast, but before we move forward, let's go over your game plan. Let's say that your name, your email address, your personal data has been involved in a data breach. The first thing you gotta do is change your passwords, especially, and I know you do this, some of you do, and I tell you not to do it all the time, you reuse the same passwords. You wanna make sure that they're new, strong, and unique. If you want my advice on creating passwords that are really hard to crack, just check out commando.com. I've got a ton of helpful tips. Next up, turn on the other types of security. Think 2FA, two-factor authentication. This way, even if your information has been stolen, strangers cannot break into your account. Step three, you sign up for alerts of any type of data breach. At commando.com slash subscribe, we have the breaking news email alerts. Definitely want to get those, commando.com slash subscribe. And then Troy has a notification service, and there are tons of other choices out there. But you also want to keep watch on your accounts. Keep a close eye on your online banking websites to make sure there aren't any strange purchases, and just comb through your social media. You might find some status updates that you don't recall sending. Another great tip is to check out your sent folder from time to time in your email. And last of all, get permanent protection through an identity theft protection service. The one I recommend is identityguard.com slash Kim. They're an advertiser of our national radio show, and you'll find their plans so affordable. Identity Guard is an extra layer of protection that keeps an eye over all your data. That's identityguard.com slash Kim. All right, it looks like it's time to get back to business. I got to say, I'm excited for what we have next. Troy, we've talked about just how high the stakes are in a data breach. We've given our listeners advice for staying safe. So let's look ahead. Obviously, the problem is here to stay, but you'd like to think it wouldn't get worse, right? All of the factors that drive data breaches are amplifying, and that's everything from the number of systems to the number of people using them to the number of things that we connect to the internet. Absolutely. IoT space is fascinating. And of course, IoT stands for Internet of Things. It describes the network of physical objects that connect to the internet. So IoT can be anything that's really smart. It could be your smart cameras, your smart cars, uh, your smart light bulbs, your smart house. You know, I don't even know why, but there is actually a smart crock pot. Like, we need that for some reason. You just put your chicken in, you turn it on for six hours, and you're done. Anyway, I digress. Troy, what's the strangest item of your house that you have hooked up to the web? Uh, I have my washing machine connected to the internet. Now, I'm not entirely sure why I did that. I was curious. <laughs> That's exactly the sort of thing that you expect at some point. I may well have a data breach. It's bizarre to really think about it. As a little kid, I never would have imagined someone could hack into my washing machine. And who knows? For kids being born nowadays, that could just be like a normal issue, say like checking the pipes in the winter. Just an ordinary problem that you have to be looking out for. Part of the problem, too, is that particularly when we look at this this IoT space, it is so cheap and so easy now to internet connect pretty much anything that organizations are doing it and they're trying to rush this to market because they want to be the first one with an internet connected toothbrush or whatever it's going to be next. That's right. And a rush to get cool new products as soon as possible can cause trouble. I mean, companies are less likely to dot their I's and cross their T's. And with the IoT marketplace, there really is no standard set security yet. So once you start rushing as well, things like security do tend to be the sort of the last thing people think of. 
when security is the last thing on your to-do list, you end up on haveibeenpwned.com. But a lot of companies don't seem to value any type of internet security. Maybe it's because the threats are not as tangible as, say, a thief stealing your wallet. But Troy, in your opinion, what's stopping these companies from giving this issue really the attention that it deserves? Information being digitized that was never digitized before. So the the toothbrush is one example. And again, collect data, which we never had electronically before. It could be a failure of just not keeping up. And that there's this sort of one big concern, which is the privacy implications of that. So we're now going to disclose information about ourselves that we just simply couldn't have before. But then on the flip side, a lot of internet-connected things do allow you to control the thing remotely. Sounds like you're totally speaking from experience. So one of the large security incidents that, that I disclosed a few years ago was related to the Nissan, the, the car manufacturer, and the fact that they had vulnerabilities which would allow you to control the climate control in someone else's vehicle. So I was literally sat here on the other side of the world turning the heater on and off in my mate's car in the UK because they didn't have any security around it. Okay, wait a second. You were on different continents, but you were able to adjust the heater on your friend's car? <laughs> wow. Wow. Um, and why did you do this? A prank? Well, interestingly enough, in, in this particular case, this was after I'd disclosed it to Nissan, and a month later, I still couldn't get them to take any action about it. And I got to the point where I said, look, if you don't do anything about it, I'm going to publicize it. So, uh, so this friend of mine was another security researcher, and, and just by coincidence, he happened to have the, the particular car that had the vulnerability. So we did up a video, published it publicly, and, and then unfortunately that's what it took in order to get this to take it seriously. It's really hard for me to believe that they would let a whole month go by without doing anything. They really had no excuse. But it's a good lesson for everyone listening. You can't rely on companies to do the right thing. It sounds bad, but it's true. Fixing security flaws can be costly. And well, sometimes businesses will just leave you at risk and pray nothing bad happens. And when almost everything is digitized, You have to be aware of just how many risks are out there. Things that would seem totally innocuous, like a washing machine, can become a risk for your security. So what's the main takeaway on this, Troy? I think one of the things that's really important in the area of of digitizing information is to do a little bit of risk-based assessment about how much information you actually want to digitize. So there's an old adage of you cannot lose what you do not have and the idea of not digitizing some things or not providing personal information to some organizations is a pretty good way of handling things right you are Uh, now i've often said before look if it comes to something like very intimate or personal photos uh if you digitize this (laughs) this now creates a risk that you didn't have before you might want to think about whether you do that Yes, there's always a risk for disclosure of anything you put online. So, for instance, a photo of a baby taking a bath. Cute image for a parent, but not something you really should put online. So the idea of of do not share what you do not have to and practicing data minimization is a really good idea. And it's, it's a practical thing. Minimizing your data is so tough when you want to share your life with your friends and family. You have photos of graduations and birthdays and weddings. There's so much temptation to share as much as possible. You just want to feel close to your loved ones, but doing all this digitally is really dangerous. So, Troy, I'd say this is a great lesson to end on. Bigger isn't always better. Sometimes the best move is to leave a small footprint, especially when it comes to your data. So, everyone... Uh, Let's all thank Troy Hunt, creator of HaveIBeenPwned.com, for joining us. He's a true cybersecurity expert. He was awarded as Microsoft's most valuable professional for developer security. And thanks so much for coming on the show today, Troy. Thanks for having me, Kim. Next up, I'm going to point you towards some awesome tools at your disposal. It doesn't seem like there's barely a day that goes by without some sort of massive data breach. It doesn't matter if you're a large company or a small gaming website for kids. Everyone is at risk. Now, the type of information that gets snatched can vary. Some hackers will steal phone numbers or passwords. Others will pry into your credit card information on sites like Amazon. Some breaches will even reveal your address and phone number. You'd like to think that a company would immediately tell you when there's been a data breach, but unfortunately, these companies don't like to divulge that perhaps there have been a data breach. That's why sites like Have I Been Pwned can be a game changer. And if you want to learn more about the free tools, check out commando.com. We've got so many great articles, everything tech-related. And also, check out my other podcast, the Kim Commando Show podcast. This one's not free, but it's three hours every week. And you're getting a wealth of detailed information for just a few bucks a month. 
I cover the most important tech news that you need to know. Plus, becoming an exclusive Commando community member helps us create more episodes like this podcast, where we talk to the movers and shakers. You can get the podcasts and check out the Commando community for free for 30 days. Just head over to getkim.com. You don't even need a promo code. We're that smart. Getkim.com, 30 days free. I want to thank Troy for joining us and for doing such great work. And while we're acknowledging people that do good work, a big thanks to our tech director, Mike James, for all his help. And a special thanks to Serena O'Sullivan for her work. She does amazing work assembling and putting these podcasts together. And thank you for listening. And do me a favor. If you learned one thing from this podcast, share it with someone else and give us a great five-star review wherever you get your podcasts. I'm America's Digital Pro, Kim Commando. And once again, thanks for listening. I appreciate you.